Um, so first off, just the one character that he said that's going to happen that we haven't seen yet um, is a third party character, and sadly it's not Gino. It's my favorite. I still think Gino has a good shot, but that's not the one that's leaked. Uh, the character that he said... Basically, what this is saying is that all those me costumes and basically all that ballot data that I know the internet tried to track down um, might actually have been entirely done for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So all the more reason for characters like K. Rule, Ashley, my personal favorite Geno, um, seem a lot more likely for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate now because it appears that the ballot data was really not done for Super Smash Bros. Wii U and 3DS. One more thing that, you know, helps Krom out is uh, when Smash Bros. got DLC, uh, Smash Bros. 4 got DLC, uh, Krom was one of the characters that got a Mii costume. So he's right up there with Gino and Ashley and K. Rool, uh, you know, for characters that got Mii costumes. And again, I feel like those were really chosen out of the ballot, and I really feel like the ballot is where a lot of the characters are going to be picked here. Um, so, I mean, if you want to know, like, specific characters and things that I want to see, uh, I mean, I, Gino, obviously, is my number one choice. Um, Gino and Banjo-Kazooie were the two characters I voted for in the ballot, so those are probably the two that I'd be the most excited for. See, it's gonna get weird, so just, I guess, get used to that. I'll try not to stop. Uh, brand new characters will be King K. Rule, Gino, Shaman Burumondo, something... I can't put too much into this leak, unfortunately, because it has Banjo-Kazooie in it and Geno, so I would really like this one, but I don't know. can't really believe it too much. Uh, it did. Um, that one said, um, I have some information regarding the upcoming Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for Nintendo Switch. The remaining newcomers are King K. Rule, Geno, Simon Belmont, Tails. All right, so moving on. Uh, Mario 2. So this one's a little tricky, because I don't think Paper Mario's in the game. Uh, I do, however, think Gino's in the game, and I think Gino might be the final character, especially after we've gotten K. Rule here. Um, it really feels like the big fan-favorite characters are getting in. The characters that people have wanted since, like, the Brawl days are getting in. They're finally happening. Um, you just look around the internet right now. People are hopeful for characters like Gino. Um, so why would it be Mario 2? Well, I honestly think Gino Gino might be the final character revealed in this game. Call me biased here, but I feel like this game has like, you know, it's it's mantra here is everyone is here. It's putting in characters like Ridley, like K. Rool, characters we've been waiting for for years. Um, so how would you end the game off with a bang? You give us Gino, the character no one thought could have a chance that all the fans wanted. He's a, he's a big one. I, I mean, again, personally, I'm, I'm a little biased here, but I'm picturing a final direct, something like the Inkling reveal with the Smash Ball in the sky, but instead of just some of the characters, we have all the characters. Because Sakurai said in the last direct that he's going to reveal every single fighter before the game comes out. So we are going to know the full cast before the game comes out. So picture every single fighter under the Smash Ball, all of them revealed, and then you got Gino, and like Mario sees him or something, and you know, he's reunited with his old friend, and he like shakes his hand or gives him a nod, and they turn and they walk towards the full cast of characters, and it just says, everyone is here, and it ends. I know this is really like a personal thing for me, um, obviously Gino biased on my end, but like, I really think that could be how you end the game. Now, if you are going to end the game with a big bang and it's going to be Gino, um, there's all the more reason to hide Gino more than any other character because that's your final punch. That's the character you don't want anyone to know. So it's possible that in everything they have for Smash, they're coding his name. And Mario 2, that's, I mean, Mario is like, you know, the if you're going to just use a generic character to blank slate characters that aren't in the game yet, um, Mario, just using Mario's name works. And the fact that Gino is a Mario character and you just call it Mario 2, uh, I think it's a great way to hide Gino in the code. So I kind of feel like that might be what's going on here. I think that potentially solves that one. I don't think it's Paper Mario. I don't think it's Mario 64. I think it's probably Gino code being found in the game. Again, call me biased. I think it, I think it has logical sense to it. Um, but at this point, I'm personally thinking this guy knows what we're getting. I think this one probably confirms Gardevoir and Gothitelle, and, um, you know, I'm kind of thinking the Mario 2 thing is Geno. Now, again, you could say I'm biased. Maybe I just, you just want this 
leak that could potentially be Gino to be right. Um, but I mean, it's a shaky leak about Gino, so that's not why I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it because it guessed Richter, it guessed K. Rule and Dark Samus right. It had a lot of things that could have deconfirmed it. You know, that's why I'm thinking this one is real. Uh, so uh mario 2 um i kind of was again I, I said this in the last video i was a little biased about that saying that it was gino but um you know i still think that it's probably a coded character some people have said well what if it's dr mario i'm kind of giving the leaker here the benefit of the doubt that he knows about Mario and Dr. Mario, and if Dr. Mario was mysteriously missing, he would think, oh, maybe Mario 2 is Dr. Mario. Regardless of that, though, I mean, he doesn't say anything about that. I'm just saying that he was guessing at Paper Mario, he was guessing at Mario 64 Mario. I would think that if he didn't see Dr. Mario, he wouldn't have even guessed at that. He would have said, it could be Dr. Mario, it could also be Paper Mario, it could be something else. Um, so I'm assuming he saw Dr. Mario, but that's just an assumption. I don't know that for sure. Um, but I do think it's just coded data um, for some other character, like it's a name uh, replacement for someone else. Um, one reason is, well he says he saw Dark Samus and they didn't call it Samus 2, so why did he call Dr. Mario Mario 2? It seems unlikely to me. Also, we know this, the um, DLC characters for Smash 4, uh, they were coded all as just Mario. That's all they were called um, to prevent people from finding out who the DLC characters were. So because we know that, Coding someone as Mario 2 seems likely to me. Um, again, I guess that Gino, I'm just guessing that it's probably a character soccer I really doesn't want people to know about, and I'm guessing Gino could be that character. It could potentially be someone else be the big secret character he doesn't want anyone to know about that he codes their name and all the data. So those are the two characters I voted for on the ballot actually were Gino and Banjo-Kazooie. So maybe I'm a little biased here, um, but you know they both feel like characters I could see getting in the game as the final character that Sakurai would kind of hide more than any other character and code their name. Um, other people I don't think it necessarily needs to be a Mario character though. I know I jumped on Gino. Um, I think it could be basically anyone that they want to hide. I'm just thinking it's Gino. Um, interesting thing about Krom is that he was a me costume, and so was King K. Rool, uh, so was Inkling. So it does seem like me costumes could point at potential characters. Um, some characters that seem really likely right now because of leaks and other things uh, who have me costumes are Isabel and Skull Kid. Skull Kid had the Majora's Mask was a me costume, and Isabel had a me costume, so we could potentially be getting them. I also, you know, again, I'm a little biased towards Gino, and I'll probably have to mention that every time I talk about him, but he had a me costume, and he also had splash art as if he was a newcomer character character when they revealed that me costume so it does appear that the me costumes are where they're you know looking to add a lot of the newcomers from so i do think that that is a really good place to um speculate on who we might be getting another character the background of sakurai's office could be pointing out is uh, banjo kazooie who's i'm a huge fan of you know right behind gino that's my most wanted character right now another smaller thing uh i think this one's a little little reaching especially because last time with like looking in the clouds of trailers i don't know it always seemed like it was reaching but uh if you look really closely when king k rules like running there's like a cloud and people have said it kind of looks like a uh, chorus kid's face or something i kind of see it um i was personally i think it looks like gino so i'm thinking it's just like a rorschach test type thing you know you're gonna see whatever you want to see in the cloud so yeah but it's worth pointing out uh the the characters it says are gardevoir uh, Gothitelle is a Gardevoir Echo, and then Mario 2. These are the things that it said that haven't happened yet. Um, so Mario 2, I'm thinking, is some sort of coded name. There's reason to believe that the DLC um, for Smash 4 had the characters coded as just Mario. So my guess was it's Geno. It could also be like Banjo-Kazooie was another guess. Golden Sun, and, you know, Skull could obviously is associated with the moon in Majora's Mask. So there you go, Sun and Moon again. Um, I suppose I could interject, uh, you know, Gino into here. Gino could be the, the stars. I, you know, I don't know. It's just a possible theme that they could be going for. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually going on vacation the next couple days. So I won't be able to drop any big videos. If some huge news happens, uh, I'll probably have to just do a small, like, reaction video to it. Like, let's say... Gino leaks or Banjo Kazooie leaks or like you know the whole roster leaks or something. Um, you know if something big like that happens, I'll make a video, but it'll probably just have to be something small and you know just like I said, just a basic reaction video to something like that. Um, I am going to prepare a video um, to drop while I'm on vacation, and uh, just for to be clear, I'm only going to be on vacation for like 
four or five days, so it's not too long. Um, and so I'm gonna make this video, it's gonna be about um, Gino, and basically a retrospective of Gino and how he became such a popular character for Smash. Uh, it's a question I get asked a lot, and it's a question I see asked a lot. You know, why is Gino so popular? Why why Gino for Smash? I mean, some people kind of understand, like, Mario RPG is a popular game, but, like, why this side character from this game from 1996, you know, is so requested and wanted in Smash? Why has there been this, like, history of him wanting, you know, wanted to be in Smash? Um, so I have a pretty good understanding of that whole story. Uh, I was there for all of it. I was a big part of all of it. I pushed for a lot of it, um, you know, among a bunch of other fans. Um, but a lot of people, especially younger people, are, again, pretty perplexed about it. You know, they don't, they don't quite understand how all that came to be. So I think that'll be a pretty interesting video if you're interested in that side of the history of Smash speculation. I said I wasn't going to make any videos in the next couple days unless something really big dropped. In fact, I even said unless, uh, like, Gino gets leaked or something. And lo and behold, of course, the next day, uh, Virgibin, our most credible leaker, is now talking about a Square Enix character getting into Smash. Um, so I'm just going to read the leak. Um, so Virgibin said, I will say the latest that I have heard is that Square Enix will be getting a new character, though, but I don't know for sure who it is at the moment. That's pretty much it, um, but that could be pointing at Gino, who's my most wanted character, and there really hasn't been any leaks or any credible leaks for him, and now we have Virgibin, you know, the guy who basically gets but, uh, yeah, pretty exciting. Hopefully it's Gino. I mean, it could be like a Dragon Quest character. It could be, um, Chrono from Chrono Trigger. I mean, it could be any Square character, really, uh, possibly like some sort of, maybe an Echo Fighter of Cloud, like Zack or something, you know, something more minor, but... I think Gino seems like the most likely candidate, so we'll have to find out. So that retrospective on Gino video is still coming, guys. This is not it. This was just a spur-of-the-moment leak from Virgibin that I wanted to get out there uh, that happens to potentially point to Gino. So anyway, thank you guys for the subscribes. I'm I get this question a lot, uh, mostly because of my, you know, username here on YouTube and over on Smashboards, which is Papa Gino's. Um, obviously, I'm a fan of Gino. I made the username over on Smashboards in, like, 2007, and honestly, I was a fan of Gino and Smash even before that. Uh, I started off over on a page called Brawl Central, I believe. It's gone now, but I actually had the username Little Mac on there, um, and I was on there for probably a good year or so before I moved over on to Smashboards um, and, and decided, you know, to go with the name Papa Gino's. Um, and basically just, you know, uh, a lot of people at the time were really into getting Gino in Super Smash Brothers. Um, but if you're kind of just either younger or, um, you know, you just are getting into Smash now, or you weren't really paying attention to the speculation days back in the Brawl days, um, you might not quite understand why Gino is so big in Smash. I get so many people um, you know, asking me or just asking the internet in general, why Gino? Like, why does everybody want Gino? I mean, he's a character from a Mario spinoff from 1996 who has never shown up really in a Mario game again, besides one small cameo, which I'll get to here. Um, you know, so it's, I understand, very perplexing. If I was a younger fan or I wasn't around for those Brawl speculation days, I would be questioning, why is Gino so popular right now. I mean, we have, like, King K. Rool just came in to Smash, Ridley just came in to Smash, Inkling, you know, Nintendo's biggest new IP, uh, Splatoon. Um, you know, why is Gino right up there with these guys? Um, so, yeah, I just, you know, want to kind of make this video just to give that history, that kind of untold history that I, I don't see too many people um, completely grasping or understanding. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Just to be clear, this is not a Gino speculation video. I'm not going to go over all the reasons why he's likely to get into Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, all the evidence in his favor. Um, I'll do a video like that down the road. This is just a retrospective on why and how Gino got to be such a highly requested and popular character choice for Super Smash Bros. So to first set the stage, you gotta go... Europeans actually weren't able to play Mario RPG, at least not officially, uh, until I think 2015 when the game was released on the Wii U Virtual Console in that region. So it can understand how among, you know, the younger fans and people who just weren't around for the Brawl speculation days, Europeans also fall into the category of people who are a little confused at why Geno is such a popular Smash choice. Game, uh, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga actually had a lot of the same um, developers and, and programmers and stuff working on it that worked on Mario RPG and it even had a small cameo by Gino. So, you know, a lot of fans of Mario RPG were waiting for the true Mario RPG sequel around this time. And 
A lot of fans of Mario and a lot of fans of Nintendo and Square in general were really hoping for a Mario RPG 2, a real true one, or at least to get Gino and possibly Malo and you know these characters we had really come to adore because again they're Gino was always kind of the fan favorite from Mario RPG, I and mean, he's a really cool character for one thing. He has a very uh, square RPG character feel to him in a Mario game, so that was just neat. And, you know, the story is kind of his own. I mean, it's basically his quest to get the Power Stars back and restore Star Road and, uh, you know, allow wishes to be granted again. Uh, Mario's really just around for the ride. So Gino was always kind of the fan favorite, and if there was one character that we could get back into, like, Mario Tennis, Mario Golf, Mario Baseball, you know, whatever it was that was coming out at the time, um, Gino was the character most fans wanted. But we had no clear path on how to get him back in there besides just, you know, a fan desire to keep him alive and want him in there. And this is when fans really want Mario RPG to come back to Nintendo, and specifically Gino, if possible, you know, to get into, like, some of the Mario games. And that's when the trailer for Brawl drops. So the first trailer for Brawl had some pretty incredible things in it. Two things that really started the hype train to try to get Geno into Super Smash Bros. So suddenly we had a way to try to get, you know, Geno back into the Mario universe, or back into Nintendo anyway, and that was, you know, get him into Super Smash Bros. Um, you know... Basically, in the lead-up to Brawl, Sakurai did a Japan-only poll for what characters people wanted to see in Super Smash Bros. The top three spots were number one, Sonic the Hedgehog, number two, Mega Man, and number three, Geno from Super Mario RPG. That's right, Geno was number three, right below Sonic and Mega Man. Again, you have to understand this time period. It was right when Square and Nintendo were starting to make up. Mario RPG was only 10 years old around that time, but honestly, a lot of fans had played it a bit later than that, especially Western fans. I know the poll was Japanese, but the whole clamor to get those characters back into Nintendo was felt around the world. So when that poll came out online and other people heard about it, oh my goodness, people went nuts. I mean, it was... Like, we really thought Sakurai was going to deliver. Again, people were expecting a roster size and characters much closer to what we're getting with Ultimate than what we got with Brawl. People were guessing it. Every third-party character under the sun, every forgotten character, every franchise, anything seemed possible. And if Gino got number three on the poll, Nintendo and Square were working together, and Gino was like, you know, a Mario character, actually someone that seemed likely... It just, it felt like it was going to happen. And there was a huge amount of fans that jumped on the bandwagon. But um, the Geno fans never really gave up hope. I mean, getting Geno back in with Nintendo was more of a cause. It was a cause that happened before Brawl, and after Brawl, it, you know, just kind of gained this huge following and this huge fan demand to really make it happen. It would kind of solidify Nintendo and Square being friends again, and possibly a return to those glory days where, um, you know, those awesome Super NES RPGs happened. So then Smash 4 came out, and, you know, we got, like, Mega Man, who, again, was the number two character on that poll, and, you know, some other third-party characters and stuff, but Square was nowhere to be seen, so people weren't really expecting Geno. I think there was still a fan base, people still wanted him, but it was kind of dying down a bit. Then Smash 4 got DLC, and we got Cloud. Not only did we get Cloud, but we got a Geno me costume. So all of a sudden, you know, it had been acknowledged. The Geno fan base was actually acknowledged in Super Smash Brothers. The Geno fan base was revitalized during this period, and there was once again a lot of talk about getting Geno into Smash, just like there was back in the Brawl days. In the end, our votes were acknowledged, but just as a me costume. But that was much like what's happened with Inkling, Krom, and King K. Rool. Some interviews then came out with Sakurai saying that he would love to put Gino in Brawl. He thought he was an awesome character, that he thought a character with um, guns for hands was just so great for uh, Super Smash Brothers and would be you know, an amazing character, but he wasn't able to realize it. Gino's Mii costume even got a splash art like he was a newcomer character. It was clear Sakurai understood that this was someone Smash fans had wanted to play as in Super Smash Brothers for years. Unfortunately, Smash DLC ended for Smash 4, and that was that. We got Cloud, but Gino was just a me costume. And people thought, well, maybe Square will be on board next time. And now we have Ultimate. And guess what? Square is on board this time. So Gino just seems extremely popular, extremely likely. And with characters like K. Rule getting in, characters like Ridley getting in, characters people have wanted since the Brawl days finally getting in, um, it just really seems like to us Geno fans that it's time for Geno to make it into Smash. Again, this has gone beyond just a character we want in. This is like a cause. This is a decade-long quest to get this character 
realized by Nintendo, back with Mario again, back into the Mario universe and acknowledged, back, you know, Nintendo and Square back together. It's, there's so much writing on this character and so much that it would mean to the fans and just mean to Smash Brothers and Mario. There means something for the DK series to get K. Rool showing up again. Gino is one of these type of characters, the ones that have something a bit bigger behind them with their inclusion in Smash. That explains it a little better. I know it's probably really confusing outside looking in. It's a game that's very old. It's from 1996. It's a side character from that game. It's a character that's only had the most minor of minor appearances in one other Mario game, and that game's old too. It's from 2003 now. And you know, yeah, he was wanted for Brawl, but why is he still wanted? Brawl is 10 years old. That's why. I hope I hope I explained it good. I hope that, you know, gives you a little bit more of the perspective of, of us Geno fans, especially the older ones who really lived through all that. Um, you know, he's not just a cool character. He is a cool character, but he's not just that. He has a lot more writing on him. He has a lot more, uh, you know, meaning to a lot of us. And so if he gets in, you know, it's going to be incredible. You're going to hear a huge part of the Smash fan base just go nuts. So yeah, I mean, if you weren't around for all that, I understand it's probably, you know, confusing a little perplexing, but I hope that gives you a better retrospective of it. I hope that gives you some understanding into Geno fans, and I hope you can join us, honestly. I mean, if you play Mario RPG, I'm sure you'll fall in love with the character. He's an awesome character. Um, and if you can appreciate that history that's behind him, that history with Mario, that history with Nintendo, and that history with Super Smash Brothers, um, you know, if Geno gets announced, I hope you're excited too, because I'm going to be flipping out. I'm sure a lot of the fan base is going to be flipping out. And, you know, I want as many people as I can to, you know, understand it and enjoy it, because I think think, um, you know, a lot of people are a little confused still, and I, I hope I can shine a little light on that, make it a little less confusing, and get you a little hyped for um, the, the character that nobody thought could ever get in, finally making it in. Uh, but I'm going to branch out further than that. I might do some, like, some Let's Play stuff. I might just do, like, I did a Geno, like, retrospective video, so I might just do some more, like, just Nintendo um, it could also be Agnes from Bravely Default, which would then be our square rep, which would fit with Virgil Ben's leak completely, who, you know, he said we were going to get Ken, Isabel, and some square rep. Um, if that did happen, that would probably mean no Gino, so I'd be pretty bummed about that, but it could make sense here. Yeah, so that question mark could be pointing to more characters. Again, I think there should be a Pokemon character. I'd be pretty bummed if it was Agnes from Bravely Default, because it would probably mean no Geno, at least not in the base roster. Um, it would be a little odd of a square choice. I feel like there's better ones, but that's, you know, just me personally. Um... Um, so there's some Geno images, so I'm always happy about that. Um, to be honest, this one I think looks the best at all the image leaks. Uh, it's just this image of Geno. I don't know what stage he's supposed to be on, uh, but there he is. Um, I don't think it's real, but it's decent looking. Um, people pointed out, I think, that the uh, the symbol on Geno's hat doesn't look like the me costume symbol. It's like this one's rounded off. The me costume symbol was a little bit more squared off, so... You know, yeah, uh, I would say Sakurai would probably stick with the Mii costume redesign that he's done if he's putting Geno in the game, so that probably disproves it. Um, there's another blurry Geno image, so there's that one. Uh, it's just blurry. I don't believe it. <laughs> um, there's this Geno image that came out a little bit before, I think, the the Agnes on yes, whatever image uh, leak. Um, I wasn't believing this one, though. Uh, I think it's from some Smash mod or something. I think somebody pointed out the model, so... Probably not true. Um, there's something kind of weird about his arm, like you can kind of tell it's been photoshopped a little bit. Um, and there's a blue and yellow pillow on the uh, couch behind him, so that could kind of point to like potentially Gino, potentially Banjo, Kazooie. Um, just gonna drop a few big ones. These probably aren't all the unrevealed characters, but these are the ones I heard about. Gino, Celica, Simon Belmont, only one not to be debunked. This was him talking about um, uh, another leak that was on that thread. This was him, he was like responding to it. Ahem, OP, only Isabel, Ken, and Incineroar are in so far. Skull Kid is not in the game, nor is Gino. Screen cap this, Dante is for November. However, it's possible he just knew Isabel's next newcomer and then was piggybacking on, um, you know, the Dante leak and stuff. So, I don't know, um, not totally sure, but Skull Kid not being in the game, Gino not being in the game, it, they. It could happen. One other leak I want to talk about here real quick uh, was on Wii U Gamer 12's channel. Um, it's just this image render of Gino. Um, like I said, uh, image leaks, I basically, you know, I don't know. I'm not an expert on images. So real fake, 
don't know, but it looks like a really nice image. It's a cool render. Um, I just figured I'd get it out there because a lot of people have been sending it to me. Yeah, it's a cool render of Gino. Um, potentially it's real, potentially it's fake. Image leaks are so tough to say. But yeah, so I just want to get all those out there right now, but I'm if I had to guess, I would say the square rep is probably Gino. Obviously, I'm biased here, but um, I think Gino is the most likely square rep. He's one of the most likely characters we have going uh, for all the reasons that Gino is likely. So that is probably who it is. So I would say Virgibin right now is, uh, you know, saying Ken, Incineroar, and probably Gino. Um, again, more on Virgibin later. I'll go we are getting, let's say, the Square Rep has, um, you know, DLC, but maybe it's announced DLC before the game comes out. Uh, potentially, we're getting a Mario RPG stage. Um, I know that's just me saying, you know, Geno, but it, it could fit, basically. And this has a huge Geno bias to it, okay? I will Geno bias to the max, completely admit to the fact that you know, I have a huge Geno bias, and this theory has a big Geno bias in it, but it does make sense, so hear me out. So. Uh, we have Virgibin, who has three characters, not two characters, he has three characters. He has Ken, Incineroar, and a square rep of some kind. He hasn't said who it is, but honestly, most likely it's Gino. Gino had that me costume with the splash art. Gino's a hugely wanted character, has been for a long time in the Smash community. Um, he'd be a big ballot choice pick. Uh, a lot of people are saying, like, with Ridley, K. Rule, it's like Gino Isaac are, like, the missing characters people have wanted for so long. So it would make sense if that square rep is Gino. So for all intents and purposes, I'm saying it's Gino. So we get Ken, we get Incineroar. We get that in, like, the next direct or something like that. We get something in late October, early November that reveals them. And then Sakurai holds off one character. He might even announce there's one character left for me to announce down the road or something like that. And then Gino's not on any of the box art, any of the, you know, promotional material for the game, because that stuff all gets printed in the lead up. And then right towards the end, there's one final reveal. And the final reveal is Gino. And I've thought Gino makes a good final reveal for a long time. I described how I, you know, how I wanted his trailer to be something with everyone is here, all the fighters there, and something with, um, you know, him reuniting with Mario, finally. It has a very similar theme to everyone is here, to finally get Gino, you know, back with Mario. It just makes sense that way. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I know this is obviously really biased towards Gino and everything, but Virgibin saying that, you know, his source that's telling him the square rep has never been wrong, um, or at least has uh, never makes a habit of being wrong, so he does trust him. Um, he's saying he could potentially be DLC, and that is another way to look at it, but that ends us on number 69, which doesn't make sense to me, and again, in a game that emphasizes the numbers so much, I feel like we would end on 70, and maybe that last character is kind of secret, maybe on the back of the box, maybe not on the box at all, something like that, and you know, looking at who Virgibin's, uh, you know, leaking to us, that character is probably Gino, and that does make sense to me. So, if the box theory is true, that's what I'm thinking. Um, if Koro Koro is true, then, you know, I gave those example stages, um, a Monster Hunter stage, a Minecraft stage, um, a Sun and Moon stage for Incineroar, Rhythm Heaven stage, and again, if Gino is in the base game as number 70, our final character, final, like, secret, ultimate reveal, um, you know, there'd be a Mario RPG stage as that fifth stage. Uh, it also makes sense for Gino to be last because a lot of people have been saying, you know, if Incineroar is the last character, it's not that hype. It's not that, uh, you know, unpredicted or, um, you know, it's just it's just the Pokemon rep. Everybody expects we're going to get a Pokemon rep. So, you know, saving a ballot choice character like Gino for the end makes sense. We got Ridley, we got K. Rool. Why wouldn't you save them for the end? Um, because you still have Gino. You still have that final punch. I've been saying this since the beginning, and I really do think it lines up with the box theory and Virgibin put together, um, and the fact that Incineroar ends at 69, have Gino instead end us at 70, put him in the base game, but as a final reveal. That's my thoughts on the box theory. If it's true, that's how I think it's going to go down. But anyway, it's still interesting that he deleted it, interesting that he commented whatsoever. So yeah, there's something. And with, you know, Virgibin saying that we're going to get a square wrap of some kind, it could potentially be Sora. You know, we really can't count that out. I know I'm obviously on Team Gino over here for the, who the square rep's going to be, but it could potentially be Sora. That would be pretty big. Here's the roster from it, just in case you're curious. Uh, it's a really nice roster. I mean, it's got Gino, it's got Banjo Kazooie, it's got Elma, it's got Medusa. It's got it's got a lot of characters. It'd be an amazing roster. But, but now he's come out and said this over on Twitter. He said, "So I'm hearing from different sources that Ken is coming to Smash Ultimate, Sora is coming, and Steve from Minecraft is coming. Also, Gino has a high chance of getting in. Take this with a grain of salt." 
So this is the first time a credible leaker has said both Sora and Gino getting in. So usually we just have a square rep, and sometimes people pick, you know, one of those two. They seem like the most likely ones. Um, this is the first time we have somebody have both of them. Mega Bidoof over on Smashboards had this really genius theory that maybe the reason Virgiben isn't sure who the square rep is is because we're getting more than one. Perhaps it's Sora and Gino. Now, obviously, this is getting a little tight roster-wise with Sakurai's uh, new statement saying, you know, we're going to slow down the pace of newcomer reveals. But it is interesting to see a credible leaker talk about both Sora and Gino, um, and that you know that could explain uh, you know why Virgiben has been unclear about the square rep. Said. I hope Steve doesn't come. He isn't quite Smash related, but I'll be I'll still be happy to see a new character. Sora, okay, I wouldn't mind. It will be cool. Gino, well Sakurai wants him and I want him. Ken, well just look on YouTube, his leaks are all over the place. Basically, um, some new footage came out, and there was a Heartless character that's sort of a, a puppet character, it actually looks a lot like Gino. So whether or not this is some sort of hint at Gino, uh I don't know, but it does look like Square is at least using a similar design here. I mean, maybe that's just a very typical puppet design, um, but it was interesting to see a Heartless character that looks a lot like Gino in Kingdom Hearts 3. Possibly, you know, the designers are going back looking at old designs for Square characters for new stuff in Kingdom Hearts 3. Possibly it is a nod to Gino, and maybe Gino is going to be more relevant uh, because of Smash. We'll have to wait and see. I obviously hope so. Um, another thing said, you might not like it, but these are your final newcomers, and it's a picture of Incineroar, Steve from Minecraft, Ken, and Shadow. He then followed up that tweet with, but don't worry, you'll get him for free in 2019 as a reward for your purchasing Nintendo Switch Online, and it's a picture of Geno. So those five characters right there, Incineroar, Steve from Minecraft, Ken, Shadow, and then Gino, or, you know, some sort of square rep, seems to be the characters everyone's talking about now. Uh, the big discrepancy is basically, is it Sora, is it Gino, um, is Shadow part of it or not? Some so, yeah, I mean, these five, or potentially six, if we get both Sora and Gino, um, characters just seem to be the ones everybody's talking about these days. I thought in November we'd get at least one more direct with the final amount of newcomers. I honestly thought it might be as big as the August direct with like five characters. And then I thought Gino would be the final character. That was my initial thoughts on how the character reveals were going to go down. So now just a couple other interesting pieces of you know news that have come out. Uh, Virgiben actually mentioned Gino by name. It was just in a like speculation post, and I've talked to a bunch of people, and we all kind of agree it probably doesn't go either way for Gino's chances. He was really just talking about um, you know uh, that Square fires people for giving away you know character names and stuff like that. But Gino is in so many leaks that Square probably can't really fire people over you know, just saying Gino. I do think, you know, Virgiben said that he's heard multiple possibilities of who the square rep is. And so, for example, if he said, yeah, most people are saying it's Gino, but I've also heard um, Slime from, you know, Dragon Quest, uh, it's possible that that would then, you know, out somebody because... Slime is, the you know, a character that was falsely told to some of the Square employees to try to weed out who has the real information, who doesn't. Um, once again, I think Sora's in the same boat as Gino. You know, Sora's in so many fake leaks and stuff. How could you fire people over people talking about Sora? I don't think this necessarily points to the character that Virgiben's heard being some, like, obscure character. Because, once again, even if he said, like oh man, it's Gino, but I've also heard, you know, so-and-so, then, you know, those people who have been told the other, you know, less um, talked about Square character could still get fired over it. And then if Virgiben talks about Gino but doesn't tell us, you know, who the other character he's heard is, and it turns out to be the other character, then it looks like he's a fake leaker. So as long as Virgiben's heard multiple Square reps, which he said he has, I don't think he can possibly talk about a Square rep um, without feeling like he's endangering somebody's job. I mean, even if he's speculating that saying Gino probably means no one would get fired, if he did say Gino and Square, you know, decided, oh man, you know, we've been following Virgin, we know that that's the leak everybody's following. We are going to fire people over it. I think just, you know, he's a smart enough guy not to, uh, you know, out somebody or potentially make people lose their jobs over leaking Smash information. So I really think this is just, you know, not really going any either way for Gino. Um, but it is interesting Virgin Ben actually finally mentioned him by name. Now, if we get Ken and Incineroar soon here, like next week, and that isn't the end, I'd guess Gino or Sora, or maybe Steve for the Final Direct's big character reveal. Here's what I'm thinking we might get. Best case scenario might look like Ken, Incineroar, Gino as the square rep, Shadow, Dixie, and Waddle Dee. 
Middle ground would look like four more, and I think this is the most likely one. Ken, Incineroar, Shadow, Geno, or something close to that. I feel like that's not the full roster. The box is just going into printing, and we'll get a few more characters. Like I said, my guess is a square rep like Geno, and maybe like an Echo Fighter. I will say up front right away, uh, this is a random 4chan image leak. This is one of those. This is one that probably has no credibility. However, it's about my boy Gino, so, you know, I don't know. I I'm a fan, so I'm just going to cover it just for fun. But that's all it is. This has, like, a Nintendo seal of disapproval on this one. So I know I usually only look at credible leaks, but whatever. I'm a Gino fanboy. I just want to look at this one. Um, but, yeah, so right up front, this one is probably nothing, but, hey, I want to look at it. Um, so here's the image. Uh, it's just a picture of Gino. Um, it looks like it's some strange kind of style, like it almost looks cell shaded. Um, this hasn't been how the reveal trailers have been so far. And this, this again, this popped up on 4chan and uh, it was said to be from Gino's reveal trailer. So it appears like it's a Geno doll because it has like blank eyes um, coming to life like like the star or Geno's spirit, um, you know, possessing the doll. Uh, there's some issues with it. Um, like I said, it's some sort of, you know, cell shaded CGI, which we haven't seen. Um, that might just be, you know, how his trailer looks. We have had trailers in the past that have like... Um, you know, a unique style to them. Like, Little Max had, like, almost a comic book style. Palatina had, like, an anime style. We haven't really seen too much of that for Ultimate yet. I mean, Isabel had, like, an Animal Crossing style, so it's possible. Um, it also appears that Gino might be, like, a doll in the playroom, like the playroom from Smash 64, like that intro, which would be really cool. I legit think that would be a perfect reveal for him to be, like, a toy in that playroom, have him come to life. Um, another thing is, I thought, you know, it would be cool since, you know, we have that spirits mode maybe happening um if gino had like a big part in that like maybe you know since he's a spirit uh you know maybe he's been called upon again to help mario like save the world or something uh i think that would be really awesome to highlight him for that mode in some way uh i've always kind of thought you know that he should have some sort of major role if he comes back as this would be his you know second time ever being with mario it would be a huge you know bring back for him so you know obviously again i'm a gino fanboy but you know that's how i felt about it so it'd be cool if he was like a major character in spirits mode and if that was some sort of one player bar. so yeah i don't know what you guys think about this gino image it's um you know pretty minimalist looking it could also be you know perhaps that they made it minimalist looking to look like the smash 64 style like gino doesn't have uh, ears in this, which is really weird. I mean, maybe his doll doesn't have ears before he gets possessed. Um, again, maybe they're trying to make it look like Smash 64's art style. Um, you know, maybe that's just a cool little nod to that if it is supposed to be that playroom. Um, but the no ears does hurt the leak. Um, the fact that it's not in Smash Ultimate style can, can go either way. Like, it would be neat if he had a reveal trailer that had just its own style to it, so that could be, like, some points in favor of this. Um, but, you know, it would also be easier to fake something that doesn't have to copy Smash Ultimate's style. So... You know, I don't know. Um, so, yeah. Oh, and then just, I guess, final thing, uh, you know, just get away from the Geno image leak for a second here, if it, you know, even is considered a leak. I don't know. This Geno image, it's just interesting. I want to talk about it. Um, so I'm just going to read it. It says, Smash leak with proof. I have some info for the new Smash game. New. Geno Incineroar. So as far as the characters go on this one, we got Gino and Incineroar as our unique newcomers, apparently. Um, this doesn't say if this is the full, you know, if this is everybody on the roster, but this is what it's telling us. Um, makes sense. Uh, Verge been saying, you know, a square rep could be Gino. Gino seems like the most likely one to me, but I know I have a lot of bias there. Um, Incineroar, again, pretty much all but confirmed to be our Pokemon rep, though this one's saying we'll have a second Pokemon rep. Um, so, yeah, those two both make a lot of sense for unique newcomers. Um, and then for Echoes, we have... One question I get a lot is, besides Geno, which character do I want in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate? Now, I usually take this question more like, what character would I main? Like, what's a character that, like, I have a personal attachment to, or a character that, you know, if they got in the game, I would put time into, I would probably play as fairly often, you know, the way that, like, if Geno got in, you know, that's who I'm going to main. That's going to be my character. But, you know, when people ask me which character do I really want, which character, you know, again, besides Geno, because obviously that's the one I really want, um, we had the Smash Ballot a few years back, and the two characters I voted for, I only voted for two characters, and they were Geno and Banjo-Kazooie. Those two characters are, um, you know, characters I've wanted for a long time. Honestly, back um, in, 
like during the Brawl speculation days, there were three characters I really wanted in the game. Three characters that I said, you know, if any one of these characters gets in the game, that's who I'm going to main. That's the character I'm going to play as. And that was Gino, Little Mac, and Banjo-Kazooie. Now, I got Little Mac in Smash 4. Um, I was, you know, super excited about that. I remember being devastated when Brawl came out and, uh, you know, Gino didn't get in. We didn't get Banjo-Kazooie. Though I didn't feel like we were going to get Banjo-Kazooie, there was still a character I really wanted. And I plan to continue playing Little Mac, um, you know, into Smash 4, even if Gino got in, even if Banjo-Kazooie got in. Little Mac, a character I could main, a character I, you know, have wanted since Brawl, a uh, character that was right up there with Gino and Banjo-Kazooie as, you know, my top three. And Little Mac was always my number one, um, like, purely Nintendo character. So, you know, I was happy to get him and didn't really think we were going to get Gino in Smash 4, didn't really think we were going to get Banjo-Kazooie in Smash 4. But now with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, the door for Gino seems totally open, and honestly, Banjo-Kazooie seemed pretty likely too. And so this is very similar to Gino. Gino is a square character who was, in my mind as a kid, always part of, you know, the Mario universe. And then as I grew older and found out later, you know, he was a square character, uh, you know, he never showed up again. And Smash just seems like this amazing opportunity to bring them back. So, yeah, Gino and Banjo-Kazooie, two characters that are kind of like never, ever again on Nintendo. I'm hoping Smash can bring them back. I have a feeling Banjo-Kazooie did very well in the ballot. Again, there were only two characters I voted for personally, and that was Gino and Banjo-Kazooie. And I've heard a lot of other people voted for Banjo-Kazooie, too. So, yeah, Banjo-Kazooie, that's my second most wanted character, right behind Gino. Um, and those people want to go back and look through a bunch of image leaks that we've gotten, again, over the last, like, month or so, uh, and see if there's anything that we debunked or looked over that maybe we didn't fully debunk might be real. Um, I have my own theories on what ones it might be. Um, obviously, my Geno bias is going very strong, especially because this guy, uh, again, is known for leaking cloud to us. So I'm guessing his insider source might be a square source of some kind and might be aware that the square rep uh, has an image out there. And there has been a lot of Geno images. So again, Geno bias, full force here. Um, again, I am very biased in looking at mostly Geno images, and uh, yeah, I mean, the fact that this guy's credibility is based in a uh, Square character that he called before, uh, and we have reason to believe that, you know, the Square character getting out would actually make Nintendo mad, uh, just makes sense to me. So that's where I'm looking. But yeah, leave some comments, and uh, let's see if we can figure this one out. Number one thing is that the sassy Gino image, which, um, you know, I was really locked in for for the past few days. I was thinking, that's it. That's the leak that, um, you know, is this mysterious leak that Tansut was talking about that is a real leak that's out there that got, um, you know, some people on the inside uh, angry about um, and that they've been, you know, we've been trying to find this leak and what leak it could be. I was really thinking it was sassy Gino. I had a ton to say about sassy Gino. We had found out um, that the background was probably from Delfino Plaza. Um, you know, there was a lot to say. There was all these leaks that, you know, came out that were kind of either connected to it in some way, either like maybe the guy posted the same thing because it was in the same thread, or um, this one came out, but it came out after this. So was it based on the, the sassy Gino image, or was it the one that was used as the base for it? There was a ton. I, I had a whole video ready on that, and then last night um, it came out that we found out where the sassy Gino image came from, and it is fake. It is totally fake. Um, it is from a Project M mod that has Gino, and it's just his dizzy animation. Um, the person even came out and showed like we have the exact image that was used for it and just blurred basically so that one is fake so with that one fake um, a whole bunch of other ones uh, came out as being fake too I guess I don't know maybe the fact that there's a real leak um, out there and people are really looking at all these you know leaks that we've gotten over the um, past month or so uh, has made some of these fake leakers come out and just admit no I faked it because maybe they want us to find the real one um, so a lot of leaks have been debunked over the last few days no idea. It doesn't seem like anybody really has an idea. There's no clear front runner. The sassy Gino image. I like that term too. People did that because he looks sassy. I, I like it. I like it. It's a cool personality for him. Why not? I'm not mad at it. Um, but yeah, the sassy Gino image was the front runner, and yeah, now it's just it's debunked. So we have nothing. Nothing. 
fact he says the the glut he uses the word glut of leaks um it makes me assume it's a character that we hear a lot about which i mean gino bias again full force here but that is gino the character that's from square that we're hearing a ton of leaks about it's gino now he says he isn't sure exactly which character it is that you know annoyed square or whatever company this is um but I have to say, most likely, given all the information he's saying here, that, yeah, his his guess is probably Gino, even though he doesn't want to come out and say it. Most of our good Gino image leaks have been debunked. Now, it's possible it's some sort of text leak or something could involve Gino or somebody else. Again, I feel like since he said the glut of the leaks um, and that it's probably pointing towards that company that Virgivan's talking about, it almost certainly is a Square character and the glut of leaks is Gino. There was a few things towards like Sora, um, a Dragon Quest character, but I still feel like I wouldn't call that the glut of the leaks. They're almost all Gino leaks as far as the Square rep goes. Now, once again, I am biased about this. And Tansa is saying he's not sure which character it is, but I feel like, I guess what I'm saying is that the character I think he thinks it is, is Gino. What character it actually is, who knows? What leak it actually is, who knows? As a final note, just as a Gino fan, uh, this happened. Um, someone asked Xander Mobus, who does the um, announcer voice in Smash, uh, if they could put if he could put Gino in the game, and he said, uh, "Let me get right on that." Um, I don't think this goes either way for Gino's um, chances. Basically, uh, Xander has said in the past that he has no control over who gets in the game, and this is a really just kind of sarcastic, offhanded comment. But I thought it was worth noting because it's what's new in you know Gino speculation talk. And now, our feature presentation. No more Fire Emblem. There is no Grand Blue, but Shadow and Ken are Echoes, Isaac is in, Chorus Kids are in, Gino is in, Mock Rider is in, Banjo is in. But there are seven characters there. So the seven characters people have pointed out are Gino, Ken, Isaac, Banjo, Chorus Kids. If this one's true, that would mean we're going against uh, Virgiben a little bit here. He said Ken, he said a square rep, which would be Gino for this one, um, but he also said Incineroar. Personally, I'd be in love with this roster. This is a really, really good lineup. Uh, Gino and Banjo Kazooie are my number one most wanted characters. So having them, so, wow, that would be pretty crazy if I you know, got that one right. That's that's pretty huge to me personally, along with Gino and Banjo-Kazooie. This would be a really amazing roster. So I'm just going to go over the final seven characters here, if this one's true, um, and this would be a pretty amazing, uh, you know, final amount of characters. First off, seven was more than I thought, but the characters we get are pretty uh, incredible, in my opinion. We start out, we got Gino, so that would be amazing, obviously, it's my most wanted. Um, we'd get Ken, so it was 7.30 a.m. Eastern time when I first put that up, and the leak had just, you know, a good amount of credibility. I thought it was, you know, potentially real, but not any more than the box theory or the sassy Gino image or anything like that. Um, but as the day has gone on here, maybe that character is someone being held off for, like, um, you know, a big reveal on their own. They'd have to be bigger than Banjo and Gino and people like that, so... So I just kind of thought this morning when I made this one that this was just another leak. It had a lot of credibility, but I really did just think it was another leak. And I mean, a week ago, I thought Sassy Gino was real and it's not. So I thought, you know, uh, we have three huge Smash Ballot fan choice characters, all of which could have interesting mechanics. That's Isaac, Banjo-Kazooie, um, and Gino. Those are all potentially Smash Ballot picks. We did have also, I have heard that Square is extra careful about secrecy and tells people different characters in order to protect the truth. This is partially why Virgiben was not sure on the Square rep. He likely heard multiple from different people, and some of these insiders that seem unsure about the Grinch leak may have also heard a different Square rep than Gino. I really want any insiders who have only heard about characters and possibly seen Incineroar to really look at the Grinch leak again. I completely understand writing off the Grinch leak at face value. If I had, for instance, heard about or even seen characters from a source that ended up being confirmed, and I was just waiting to see Incineroar and possibly heard a different square rep than Gino, then I could understand how...
regardless of whether or not the leak is real or fake, there's still a very good possibility that we will be getting Gino or Banjo or someone in the direct. And if that happens, I will be walking out of there very, very happy. So, you know. Is that it? Yeah, it's Treehouse. Damn. Uh, that was, I'll be perfectly honest. What a disappointment. It's disappointing. <laughs> Extremely disappointing. I'm excited about five DLC characters. I still have high hopes for Gino. I really yeah. do think he's still there, but man, ouch. <laughs> The chorus kids with the composer that was a completely unique idea i hadn't had i hadn't ever heard before anyone say that um gino was a bit smaller than he's usually shown because he's like a doll character i mean that leak had so much interesting things with just the characters and the characters um so i, I haven't gone over this too much this uh speculation round because you know it's middle max already in the game but back in the brawl days there were three characters i really wanted and it was gino little mac and banjo kazooie um i always thought gino and banjo kazooie were the tougher ones to get in but i and I'm still excited uh, to play the game and play as that character, even though I don't get Gino um, and Banjo Kazooie, and Gino may have to wait till DLC or whatever. I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but so I thought we were going to get the box theory, which was just Ken and Incineroar, but I always thought we'd get some other character. Unfortunately, I thought it was going to be Gino, but we got Piranha Plant. So then there's Gino. Gino has only been seen as like a token icon thing that like represents you in like certain modes and probably for your um, your online like badge card or whatever. Uh, so I don't know. I think Gino's still in the running, but we'll see if he's a spirit or not. And even if he is, again, I don't know if spirits deconfirm characters or not. We're kind of, I'm kind of up in the air about it. Um, if they don't, I think Shantae, Dixie Kong, um, potentially Gino, whether or not he's a spirit, um, and we'll see if there's a bandana Waddle D are all still in the running. Um, but if they do deconfirm characters and if Gino is one, you know, that's unfortunate. I really want Gino still. Um, and it would appear that most of the DLC characters are going to be third party if that's the case. Uh, so we'll just we'll have to see. So far, I feel like Waddle D or Bandana Waddle D and Gino are kind of the lone survivors for potential DLC characters. Um, interesting thing about Piranha Plant, just as a final note here, is so I was always thinking if we got Box Theory that then we'd get Gino as like a final secret character, that there would be a final secret character. So I was right about that, that Box Theory wasn't totally it. There's gonna be one more character. Um, it just it was Piranha Plant and not Gino. Um, but one interesting thing about Piranha. So I don't know if that points to the fact that maybe he's been really look at, looking at like everything Mario RPG lately. Um, maybe because he's working on Gino as one of the DLC characters. It's obviously me being biased and hopeful here. That there are spirits for some of the playable characters. And again, Gino is just an icon, at least from what we've seen so far. So there are definitely icons of some of the playable characters. Possibly probably all the playable characters have an icon, I would imagine. So I still personally have a lot of hope for Gino. I feel like if there's seven square characters being told to him, Gino's got to be at least one of the names on there. And uh, Gino being just an icon, again, I don't know if he's a spirit or not, but so far we've only seen him as an icon or a token. And I'm, I'm just going to hold out hope. I've held out hope for 10 years. I'm going to continue to hold out hope. Um, and if uh, Verge Ben is right and the square character is the first revealed DLC character anyway, um, hopefully it'll be Gino and I'll get that pretty soon here. Dragon Quest is really popular in Japan. It's sort of the first JRPG, uh, so that does make sense. Personally, of course, I still want Gino, um, and I know there's a lot of people who want Sora. I don't know how that would work with And then finally, we have the Square characters. My most hopeful is Gino. I don't think he's out of the running because he's just an icon or token, um, and we'll see if he's a spirit. Again, it's possible spirits don't deconfirm characters. Like I said, uh, you could add Dixie Kong, you could add Shantae to this list, but um, yeah, we got so I got Gino on there as a potential character. So next we got Sora from Kingdom Hearts, also a very possible Square Enix rep. Be really huge, but it would mean getting Disney on board. Um, I'm a big fan of Kingdom Hearts, so that would be cool. I know a lot of people are fans of that. It would make a lot of sense uh, financially to push Kingdom Hearts as Kingdom Hearts 3 is coming out soon. Um, so I will admit Gino's chances are a little less as a DLC character. I always thought he made a lot more sense as a base roster character. So I will admit that fully. So now knowing that Nintendo themselves are the ones picking these DLC characters, it doesn't bode particularly well for characters that were more Sakurai choice style characters. Uh, specifically, Gino, unfortunately, as he's my most wanted character, um, was always more likely as a Sakurai choice. I always thought Gino was more likely as a base roster character, and then specifically I thought, you know, one of the main reasons he has a good shot is because Sakurai has expressed in the past that he likes Gino and wants Gino in the game. But if Nintendo was choosing these characters, I don't know if that means that 
that they'd pick Gino. Now it's possible if the Mii costume sold really well or if the Smash Ballot, you know, really showed Nintendo's, uh, Gino's popularity that Nintendo may choose him based on that. Um, Nintendo did do this tweet, uh, it was quite a few months ago, I think it was before E3, where they mentioned Mario RPG and uh, it was something about like Team Gino versus Team Mallow or something like that. So it's possible Nintendo would still go to Square and try to get Gino. Um, it could still be profitable to them to do that, but it does kind of hurt Gino's chances, I feel like, not having Sakurai be the one picking these DLC characters. Okay, so obviously there are more than five characters on here, so yes, I have not completely nailed down five characters. But I'm just going to start in the top left. Um, so obviously I'm going to keep holding out hope for Gino. He's my most wanted character, and um, while I'm really happy with the roster for Smash Ultimate, I still have Little Mac, who was one of my top three characters I always wanted back in the Brawl days. Um, I'm still happy with the roster, but yeah, I'm still holding out hope for Gino. So Gino is my number one choice for Square Rep. I do think um, it does still make sense. I think Nintendo could still go get Gino. I think with the Smash Ballot showing Gino's popularity could still happen. Um, so yeah, I have Gino as my number one choice. As far as stages go, the um, Rainbow Road stage from the 3DS was cut. So I'm wondering if that could possibly be being worked on and be a Geno stage. Or maybe it got cut in favor of replacing it with a Star Road stage as they'd be pretty similar, once again working as Geno's stage. So that's my guess for the stage that would come with that character. Now if we don't get Geno, and once again I will admit that Nintendo choosing the characters rather than Sakurai outright picking them does hurt Geno's chances slightly. If um, it is Nintendo choosing the characters and they don't choose Geno, um, I actually think the next most likely is someone from Dragon Quest. Now I showed Slime here, I mean if Sakurai is making Piranha Plant work, it's very possible he goes with just the most iconic character from Dragon Quest, which is Slime. Um, it's also possible that maybe people voted a lot for Goku and they want an Akira Toriyama designed uh, protagonist character so we get like Edurek or something. Um, so I don't really know but a Dragon Quest character I think is probably the most likely with Nintendo in the helm even though I'm still rooting for uh, Gino here. And then right next in line for that, yes, there are three pretty likely Square characters here, is Sora from Kingdom Hearts. I think the toughest thing with Sora is getting the negotiations with Disney, but we'll see. If Nintendo does want to go out of their way to do that, um, it is possible we get Sora. I do think that would push sales a bit for um, kind of rival companies, unless uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 somehow makes its way onto the Switch, though I'm not really banking on that. So I feel like, again, Geno or Slime or just any Dragon Quest character is more likely than Sora, but it could happen. Sora would be pretty huge. Sora would get downloaded a lot. Um, it's possible Square told Nintendo that's who they want, and Nintendo brought that to Sakurai, and Sakurai said, sure, um, you know, totally possible. With several people implying that the Square rep will be the first one revealed and possibly at the Video Game Awards, um, I do think we'll find this one out probably first. It is possible we'll get more than one Square rep, so I won't completely count out Gino or Sora or a Dragon Quest rep if we get one of these. It's possible more than one uh, DLC character could be going to Square, but um, this is you know, pretty much what I'm thinking here. Um, so probably Dragon Quest the most likely, Gino the one I want the most, and then Sora as the lesser likely of these three, but still totally possible character here. So as for a stage for either of these guys, it's possible the Pack Maze stage was held off for DLC in a similar way. I'm saying that Rainbow uh, Road might have been held off if Gino is the character to be reworked as DLC. It's possible... I'm going to read down a bunch of them. Um, he does start talking about Square characters. Specifically, he does talk about Gino and says he hasn't heard anything. Um, though, Virgil Ben said he heard seven different names, so you know, Hitagi not hearing about Gino doesn't necessarily mean Gino isn't in. He doesn't seem to be totally 100% on a Square character. Um, then someone says, I know you said that insert character in Smash things are usually no's, but I gotta know any hint on Gino. Uh, Hitagi says, zilch. So yeah, he hasn't heard of Gino. The only one I can think of that wasn't asked about was Chrono from, like, Chrono Trigger, which would be amazing. He'd probably be my second best choice uh, as far as a Square character if I can't get Gino. Um, so now, as for Gino specifically, as a lot of people say, oh, well, Gino's a spirit. We actually don't know that. Gino's been shown as an icon or, like, a token, not a spirit. So it is possible he's a spirit. And again, I don't know for sure if spirits deconfirm characters or not. I just think it probably does, but not for sure. So I will hold up hope for Gino probably all the way through this. If we get a square character, and unless Sakurai says, that's the only square character out of this DLC pack, um, I'll probably still be holding out hope for Gino if we don't get Gino as that square character. So, yeah, I mean, I got nothing to lose. I just... I want him in the game, so I'll be holding out hope till the end. So I feel like if Nintendo was going to go to Square to get some old RPG from Super NES days, it's sort of obscure at this point um, for a character that they would go for Geno, as that's the big one everybody's been clamoring for for Smash for so long. 
So yeah, a lot of the main characters that people were like, well, if they're not a spirit, you know, maybe they're going to be DLC, have now been shown to be spirits. Very, very few characters are not spirits. Now, I will uh, stress this again, that Gino has only been seen as a token for battle mode. So uh, yeah, not totally a spirit, but it could happen. I'm just waiting for, you know, some footage of him being a spirit, basically. But we haven't seen that yet. Um, there's also apparently no spirits that we've seen. The closest thing we've seen is the Geno token, and obviously Geno was a me costume for DLC, so that was something Nintendo already had the rights to. The only other thing that Nintendo really got the rights to besides Cloud, his stage, the music, and the Geno me costume, and now a Geno token that we've seen is the Chocobo um, hats, that costume. If Cloud was the last holdout character that they had difficulty getting into the game at all, and we're seeing a severe lack of square representation, it is possible that the DLC character pretty much has to be Geno. Geno is a character that we know Nintendo has the rights to use from Square. They've had the rights since they got the Mii costume. The only other character we know for sure that they have the rights to use is Chocobo for those hats. Um, I guess Chocobo is a possibility as, you know, we're getting Piranha Plant as a DLC fighter, but... I think Nintendo would probably know how important Geno is to the fan base, um, you know, based on the Smash Ballot and stuff like that. I kind of thought Geno's chances were pretty low. If he was a token, I thought he'd maybe be a spirit. If he was, um, you know, if Nintendo was choosing the characters, I thought he might not be a character they would choose. But if we are indeed getting a square ref, um, and Nintendo is choosing the characters, it's possible they chose the one that they simply have the rights to use, which would be Geno. Um, I think this boosts his chances significantly, and I know I have a lot of Geno bias, but honestly, if Cloud was difficult to get in the game, if we have almost no square stuff in the game at all, um, I think Geno has a really good shot. I'm waiting to see if he gets a spirit or not. Again, I don't think spirits deconfirm characters, but I do think they kind of hurt a character's chances. Obviously, we won't, we won't know for sure until we get the full DLC to know if a spirit deconfirms a character or not. It's possible we get like one character out of the DLC that's a spirit or, you know, two or three, you know, who knows? It'll be easier to tell after we get at least one character announced. But at this point, since I haven't seen Gino as a spirit, if we get the game, um, you know, revealed and we get no spirit of Gino and just a token, I think that does something amazing for his chances. I'd say he probably is extremely likely at that point. Now, there's also a rumor, of course, that we're going to get the square rep first. That's going to be the first DLC announced, and there's a little bit of a rumor by quite a few different people saying that the video game awards may also be where they announce their first DLC character. So I am kind of looking forward to that. Now, it might not be Gino. Of course, there's a lot of good things going for other characters, but this new information about Cloud being the last representation, um, or the last character to get into Smash, and the fact that Gino um, is maybe not a spirit, but just a token, uh, could bode really, really well for his chances. So it's possible, um, you know, it's not Gino, but I do feel like within those seven, uh, Gino is probably one of the possible names. Now, Gino possibly being a name in those seven square characters is just my opinion. I don't know that for sure, of course. So while it pains me to say this, Gino is in fact a spirit in this game and not just a token. He is in the spirit data here. Uh, Melo is also a spirit, which is pretty cool. Uh, and they are the only square spirits besides Cloud. Cloud has two spirits. Uh, and then there's Gino Melo, and that's it. There is a um, and also, just interesting on Gino and Melo being spirits, they are considered Mario characters. They're in with the other Mario characters, so that's pretty cool. So with Gino being a spirit, I have to kind of go over, do I think spirits deconfirm characters or not? Uh, I think there's two ways to look at this, honestly. I don't think it helps his chances, I'll say that. Uh, it definitely would be better if he was mysteriously missing from here, and I will go over some characters that are mysteriously missing as spirits who could be DLC characters. But I am taking this as a bit of a hit against Gino, though I will say because of how little Square content is actually in this game... Um, yeah, it's possible Gino is the, if we're getting a square rep, is the square rep, because there is almost no square content. I'll go over it in a little bit, a few other things that aren't here. So while we do have a good amount of third-party spirits showing up in this game, not from Square, however, like I said, two for Cloud, and then Gino Melo, that's it. Um, we do not have any me costumes returning from the third-party uh, companies. So any me costume that was third-party, a lot of the DLC was third-party me costumes, not here. Nothing from Sega, nothing from Capcom, nothing uh, from Namco, and nothing from Square. So there is no me costume for Gino. Uh, there's no Chocobo hat even. Um, so what could that possibly mean? I don't know if we're going to get me costumes later on that maybe you have to pay for somehow. It didn't appear to be part of the fighter pass. Um, 
it's possible they're like free DLC, though I feel like maybe part of the reason they're cut here is so that, um, you know, third parties can get some money for, for when they're actually sold. Um, we will see what happens with that, but it's very interesting. There's still like, there's like nothing here. So extremely lucky Gino is represented at all in this game. If, um, you know, we end up not getting a Square rep or something, and, you know, it was just Square was this huge holdout and they're just really stingy about everything, and all we got was, you know, the bare minimum here. Very happy we got Gino and Mello as spirits even. Um, it's also, again, possible that Gino is DLC or something. I'm, I'm not losing hope completely here. Um, totally still possible, so we'll have to wait and see. I'm not losing hope for Gino, though. I think there's a couple of ways to look at this. There's, you know... And it does appear that Square is being really stingy this game. So if Vergeben is right and we are getting a Square character, it is possible that Nintendo only has the rights to Gino. We don't even have Chocobo back anymore. So, yeah, that's you know, pretty good. It could be a Gino and Malo combo of some kind, which would be really cool. Um, uh, we have actually seen the Gino spirit um, attached to someone, and we've seen the Malo spirit, um, which is, uh, I think the fight is with Robin, and uh, Malo is using, like, the um, the image from Mario RPG that Malo has. So, yeah, that's, they are in their spirits. We've seen it now. I've said it before, but I'll say it again here. I don't know either way if spirits deconfirm characters or not. I see good arguments on both sides of that table. So having Gino be a spirit, um, you know, part of me is really disappointed in that and thinking, you know, maybe he isn't in the game at all. Uh, Verge Ben is still saying he believes there's going to be a Square Enix rep, um, and I'm still holding out hope for Gino, but that was um, a big blow, <laughs> you know, recently from all this data mine stuff. Pretty interesting stuff here. Um, obviously, I'm still going to be holding the torch for... Gino, and I hope spirits don't deconfirm characters. I hope he's a Square Enix rep, but man, it really looks like... Now that Polar Panda has leaked the list publicly, I don't mind talking about it in a video. Here's the list. Chrono from Chrono Trigger, three Dragon Quest characters, Erdrick, Luminari from Dragon Quest XI, and Slime, Sephiroth from Final Fantasy, Gino from Super Mario RPG, and Sora from Kingdom Hearts. Now let me go over these a little more specifically here. Sephiroth, the Dragon Quest names, and Chrono were said to be more likely. Virgibens heard them more than the other names. Gino was told to him, and he was told not to take it too seriously. And then Sora was told to him as not being the character, that Sora wasn't going to be the character. So that's the list. Polar Panda first leaked this list over in the Gino thread of Smashboards, and while this list was said to not take Gino too seriously, um, Polar Panda actually has a little bit of evidence towards Gino's inclusion, so that's why they leaked it there first. Basically, their evidence is that um, they know someone in Nintendo, someone they call a Nintendo ambassador, who supposedly has heard that, at least within Nintendo of America, there's a rumor with among like low-level Nintendo employees and stuff that Gino is the square rep. I had heard this already before Polar Panda had told me about it, and Polar Panda then started talking publicly about this Nintendo ambassador they know, um, you know, saying that there's a rumor that Gino might happen. I've also heard this same rumor from other people saying, um, you know, such and such, uh, my dad works at Nintendo kind of thing, um, and he's heard uh, Gino might be the Square Rep, stuff like that. Um, possible among Nintendo of America, Gino was the name they were given. Whether or not that's the character that the Square Rep's actually going to be, I don't know. It might be a bait-and-switch name, it might not be, who knows, but there does appear to be this rumor um, among Nintendo employees that the Square Rep's going to be Gino. So next up, we got Gino. Obviously, Gino is my choice for Square Rep. Um, we do know Gino has a spirit in Smash Ultimate, and there appears to be very little Square stuff in Smash Ultimate. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of in favor of him. At the same time, if spirits deconfirm characters, which we don't know for sure yet, but there's a pretty good argument that that could be the case, um, could deconfirm Gino. Uh, if it does deconfirm Gino, and uh, Virgin was told not to take Gino too seriously, uh, of course, that may count them out. Now, Polar Panda is saying they've heard a rumor from this Nintendo ambassador of theirs um, that, you know, Gino is the rumored character uh, from around Nintendo, that that's what their Nintendo ambassador has heard. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's something in favor of Gino, but once again, these names may just be names that are sent out to different uh, branches to trick people so we don't know who the Square rep is. Again, Square is notorious for uh, trying to cover up leaks and stuff, and this is kind of how they would do it for Smash. So while I would really like Gino to be the case, um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if he's likely or not, um, at least among these names, if we're following um, 
you know, who Vergevin thinks it's going to be or who Vergevin is pointing towards. If Vergevin's information is even correct, um, obviously Rice is coming out saying it might not be true. Vergevin might not know anything about DLC. So we'll have to wait and see, but that's kind of what's going on with Gino here. So after Gino, we got Chrono. Um, Chrono would probably be my next most wanted character after Gino for square reps. I would also like Sora, but I'm a pretty big Chrono Trigger fan. I think it's an amazing game. Um, Chrono was always just one of those characters I never thought could get into Smash, so you know the possibility of him has never really crossed my mind. Uh, he has a similar thing with Gino, like they're both you know from older Super Nintendo games. Also with Chrono, there might be some tough negotiations uh, between like composers and stuff like that. At least with um, Gino, we know that the composer for Mario RPG is on board for Smash. Um, Polar Panda is saying that you know their Nintendo ambassador thinks it's Gino. Uh, I'm tentative to get my hopes up for Gino just because last time I got my hopes up for Gino, it didn't turn out so good. <laughs> I always have to throw my Geno bias into this sort of debate, and I will say I'm not so sure if third-party characters work the same way with this um, Spirits Deconfirming characters based on the timing of when stuff was chosen. Uh, mostly because I think that it's possible Nintendo, uh, let's say with Rayman or Geno, you know, got the rights to use the character. Polar Panda heard the seven names, and I actually heard the seven names myself, but kept them to myself. Uh, but Polar Panda decided to come out and release them a little while ago, so I'll just go over what those seven names are if you're not up to date. Uh, three of them are Dragon Quest. It's Slime, Edric, and Luminari, uh, Chrono from Chrono Trigger, Sephiroth from Final Fantasy, and then Virgin was told Gino, but probably not Gino, like don't take that one too seriously, and then Sora, but that it wasn't going to be Sora. So those are the seven Square Enix candidates that Virgin has supposedly been told if we're getting a Square Enix rep. Now, Polar Panda supposedly has a Nintendo ambassador source that told him it was Gino, uh, or at least that Gino is who uh, Nintendo of America's, like, staff is kind of whispering about, thinking that that's who the Square Enix rep is. Uh, obviously, we have seven names floating around. It's possible uh, Square is giving different names to different uh, places to try to, you know, smoke screen uh, which character it actually is. So even if Polar Panda is hearing Gino, it's possible that's not the actual one. But it's also possible that Virgil Ben's hearing, oh yeah, it's like more likely Dragon Quest or Chrono or Sephiroth, and that's not true. Maybe it is Gino. So I don't know which one it actually is, but um, Polar Panda is seemingly leaning towards Gino, whereas like Virgil Ben um, and Hitagi a little bit has come out and said stuff about Dragon Quest, Chrono seeming more likely, uh, and uh, Sephiroth also seems more likely than Gino and Sora. Also, don't get Polar Panda confused with Leaky Pandy. Leaky Pandy is the one saying that there might be some sort of Dragon Quest rep at the Video Game Awards, whereas Polar Panda was the one who leaked the seven Square characters that Virgin Ben heard and uh, has a Nintendo ambassador source who believes Gino is in the game, or that at least Nintendo is talking about Gino being um, possibly the Square rep, or possibly a DLC rep at all if we get a Square rep. Zen Other and Hitagi seem to be saying Steve's playable. Uh, a lot of them seem to think that there is going to be a Square Enix rep. Polar Panda is saying he thinks it's Gino, whereas it appears the rest of them uh, think it's probably not Gino. Um, none of them think it's Sora. And that could be any of those seven. Slime, Edric, Luminari, Chrono, Sephiroth, Gino, or Sora. All totally possible. Something big happens, yes, I will film myself. So don't worry, if something like Gino gets revealed, I will be filming it. I won't miss that. People have asked me who am I going to main in this game. Um, probably Little Mac still. I'm a big Punch-Out fan. The three characters I always wanted for Brawl were Little Mac, Geno, and Banjo-Kazooie. So now that we don't have Geno or Banjo-Kazooie, at least in the base game for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, some retrospective stuff. I did like, you know, why I want Geno, why I want Banjo-Kazooie. We got something like Geno or Banjo-Kazooie um, or anybody else. I, I will film myself, so, you know. Um, Geno, Rayman, characters that have spirits I don't think are out of the running. Um, and that's pretty awesome. Um, honestly, I would rather get Gino uh, like as a me costume than not have any playable Gino in the game at all. So yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Maybe I'll start maining me Gunner if I can get Gino back into this game. That's not to say I don't think Gino still has a chance. I think he does. It's getting kind of lower and lower the further we get here, though. So um, missing that me costume does kind of hurt. I would like to get that back if possible. I know a lot of people liked some of those me costumes uh, that we're missing now, some of the third-party ones. So yeah, I'd be happy to pay 75 cents to get a few of those back. Other than that, nothing now really that obviously means nothing on Gino. Polar Panda uh, was saying before that he had a source that thought um, Gino might be pretty likely that people, uh, lower level people at Nintendo had kind of been whispering about Gino. So now that Erdrick seems pretty likely, you know, who knows, but he hasn't heard anything more on Gino.
After this idea that Sora could be who Brave is instead of Erdrick, um, this leak started floating around. I'm just going to read it. It comes from Reddit and it says, It's funny people still deny the truth and think Gino can still get in despite being a spirit, and effectively downvote anyone who says anything that goes against this. And now to finish up the possible Square characters with my personal bias favorite character, Gino. Um, I doubt that Brave is codename for Gino. Uh, again, we're basically only getting the idea that it's going to be a Square character from the leakers, and the leakers are pretty firmly saying that it's most likely Erdrick, so I hate to go against them and then still think it's going to be a Square character. Possible, but it's, it's a tough call there. Um, but the cool things going in favor of Gino is that he is a brave character. Of course, you could say that about nearly every single video game character in existence, so that's a really flimsy argument. But hey, maybe the code name doesn't mean much. Maybe, uh, you know, they weren't really saying much with the code name and they don't want people to figure it out. So while Brave doesn't really have much to do with Gino besides the fact that he is a Brave character, um, there is something interesting going on here that I've heard proposed, which is the stats for the character. So the height being about Ness's height does feel about right for what you might expect Gino to be. Now again, there is kind of um, two camps on the height thing, whether or not it's really important for the character. But the fact that the stats are floaty and the character does some sort of odd slide, I heard this really interesting idea that um, Gino is a possessed puppet. And it would be interesting if the way they had the character move around was like a possessed puppet, kind of um, ragdoll-ish, which could have a floaty look to the jump and could definitely have that sort of skid slide to it. So while I'm not really putting my money on Gino at this point, at least not for the character codename Brave, um, yeah, it is possible that if he moved around it would be like that, and so those stats could potentially fit Gino and everything, I'm feeling like it's probably going to be Erdrick. I've kind of conceded that at this point. That's probably going to be the square rep. Um, as a huge fan of Gino and somebody who really wants Gino, of course, I, you know, feel that that's, <laughs> Erdrick's kind of the direct rival to Gino. That's not to say I'm completely giving up hope on Gino or any other square characters. Could definitely happen. I don't think Erdrick is 100% yet um, until we see him and everything, but he is still the most likely one. Um, and hey, we could get another fighter pass. So if there's a character you really want, Sora, Gino, um, you know, hold out hope. It's very possible we'll get another fighter pass. Okay, so on the subject of do spirits deconfirm characters or not, I got some hints towards Gino happening. So yeah, I'm hugely biased towards Gino, um, but there's actually a surprising amount of Mario RPG references. So one of two things happened here. Nintendo got Melo and Gino, because they're spirits of them, and they have the rights to use them in Smash. So, however, I kind of don't think Nintendo would say, hey Square, can we use Gino, Melo, and then um, Mega Smilax for this tiny name drop? Uh, but there's not that much Super Mario RPG stuff in Smash. There's only Gino, Melo, and now a there's no stage, there's not a ton of spirits from Super Mario RPG, there's just Gino and Mallow. So it would be even more bizarre again if they just got Gino, Mallow, and then one boss name. So I'm thinking it's down the road. Let's say Erdrick gets in and we get um, Mii costumes back. So maybe we'll get the Gino Mii costume back. That would make more sense. You know, I'm just speculating here, but I'm kind of thinking we'll get more Mario RPG stuff. Whether or not that means Gino is a playable character, say, for Fighter Pass number two, or it's not Erdrick, it's Gino, I don't know. But I do think we're going to get something else Mario RPG. I think it would be really, really strange for Nintendo to go out of their way to get the rights to Gino, Mallow, and then Mega Smilax, and not just everything Mario RPG. And if they got the rights to everything Mario RPG, they're going to use it for at least some more stuff. Me costume, some music tracks. So I'm, you know, expecting more Mario RPG stuff now. I will say all these little references and nods do show that Sakurai does hear the fans, does hear that we like Mario RPG. I mean, what other game does any mention of Mario RPG? Uh, not since Mario Luigi Superstar Saga with the tiny Geno cameo have we gotten anything Mario RPG um, in a Nintendo game uh, besides Sakurai bringing the Geno costume and the Geno spirit and stuff into Smash. So yeah, I mean, Sakurai does hear us. He is, you know, listening to us. Whether or not we get Geno as a playable character, that might be all between Nintendo and Square. That might not be Sakurai. So maybe Sakurai is just giving us these little nods because he knows the fans like Mario RPG, and he wants to do everything he can to show he does too. Not to harp too long on Gino here, but a friend of mine over on my Discord also came to me with this kind of interesting theory. Obviously, there's this big debate over whether or not spirits deconfirm characters. Can we get a spirit character as a playable character? Can Gino get in? Can Shantae get in? 
What do you guys think? Do you think I'm off about that? Do you think something else is going on here? Do you have anything to say about any of that? Um, the stuff about Square and Mega Smilax um, being mentioned. Is that interesting to anybody? Do you think uh, more Mario RPG stuff is coming? Do you think that points to Geno and Cedric? As far as Square reps go, obviously I really want Geno um, and uh, Chrono would be cool too. Those are kind of my most wanted. Geno, Chrono, Sora, any one of those three would get me really excited. And then the final interesting thing that happened today has to do with the Punch-Out! series. I'm a huge fan of the Punch-Out! series. In fact, my most wanted characters for Smash ever since back before Brawl came out were always Geno, Banjo-Kazooie, and Little Mac. So I've gotten one of the characters I've really wanted for Smash, and that was Little Mac. Okay, so that was Tansa being extremely open about all the information they seem to have. Um, as a Geno fan, obviously, I'd rather get Geno. Um, there's some other Square characters I could... Of course, it certainly doesn't hurt Chrono's chances. Um, Virgibin talked about seven possible square reps, seven names that he had heard about. Uh, those names were Erdrick, Luminari, Slime, Sephiroth, Geno, Sora, and Chrono from Chrono Trigger. I was totally shocked when we got Cloud, for instance. Um, so Gino's always been the character that's... Gino's my number one most wanted character. Obviously my number one most wanted square rep. But my second most wanted square rep would probably be Chrono from Chrono Trigger. If I had a choice of who could get in the game and it wasn't Gino, um, I might choose Sora simply because so many people like Kingdom Hearts and Sora... I have a lot of Banjo bias, I will completely admit that. My most wanted characters for Super Smash Bros. Brawl were Little Mac, Gino and Banjo Kazooie. So when I made my name, my username over on Smashboards, I came up with the idea of Papa Gino's because I just thought it was a funny pun on a pizza restaurant and the name Gino, which was one of my most wanted characters. Um, so I am still really anticipating Banjo. Uh, Gino, I am kind of in the boat where spirits probably deconfirm characters. I would still obviously be ecstatic if Gino got in, but really I'm kind of pushing for Banjo as DLC at this point. As I None of the third-party Mii costumes from Smash Wii U and 3DS came back for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So, for instance, the idea is that, say, Square is going to have a rep in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate as one of the DLC characters, and when that character gets um, revealed, alongside it will be Mii costumes from Square. Probably the cut ones from Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, such as the Geno Mii costume and the Chocobo Mii costume. Um, so, yeah, that's the basic idea here. So if that rumor is true and Erdrick is coming to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, when Erdrick comes to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, it's possible that the cut Geno Mi costume and the cut Chocobo Mi costume could come back alongside with him, and potentially some Dragon Quest Mi costumes. And yes, of course, that would mean that Geno would not be coming to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate as a playable character. Instead, that spot would be taken by Erdrick, and Geno would just return as a Mi costume like he was for Super Smash Bros. for Wii U. Um, obviously, that bums me out a bit, but uh, hey, if I can get Geno back as a Mi costume, it's better than nothing. I'll just pick up Mi Gunner and start playing that character wearing the Geno costume. Um, I'd be happier with that than to have Geno as just a spirit. Um, I really wanted three characters. Three characters were my most wanted characters. Number one was Gino. Um, and then I also... Um, Gino, I thought, had a pretty good shot because we had seen that old series were getting revived, like um, Kid Icarus with Pit getting in. We had seen that third parties were something that could happen, like Snake. And this was around the time when Square and Nintendo were just starting to be friends again. So there was this big push to get Gino... Um, you know, back on Nintendo, back in Mario in some way, and we saw, you know, Smash was going to be, that was how it was going to happen. And I think there was like this poll in Japan, really tough to source this, but I'm pretty sure this was a real thing. There was a poll in Japan, and the most wanted characters for Smash were Sonic was number one, Mega Man was number two, and Geno was number three. So I thought Geno had a really good shot. So when I went to make my username for Smashboards way back in 2007, um, those were the characters I wanted. Little Mac, Gino, and Banjo-Kazooie. I went with Papa Gino's because I thought it was just a funny pun on a pizza restaurant, Papa Gino's, but spell it like Gino from Mario RPG, one of my most wanted characters. So essentially what I'm getting at is that I've wanted Banjo almost as much as I want Gino, and basically Banjo, Little Mac, Gino have all been my top three, and they're, they're fighting for the number one spot. I put Gino above basically just because I made the name and have really wanted him specifically for Smash for a long time because of that. Um, uh, 
after the Smash Ballot came out, the two characters I voted for were Gino and Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, Little Mac was already in the game at that point. So those are the characters I wanted, those are the characters I voted for, and of course after Cloud got in and we got the Gino Mii costume, which even had splash art like it was a newcomer, um, I really thought going into Smash Ultimate that Gino was the one that was likely going to get in. I thought Banjo-Kazooie had a much lower chance of getting in, but Gino I thought had a pretty good shot. I really thought for Smash Ultimate, um, Gino had a pretty good shot, and Banjo was much less likely. Possible, but um, much less likely. I mean, there were some things going for Banjo, but when I was speculating um, in the early days of Smash Ultimate speculation here, I was really thinking Gino had a very, very good shot, especially for base roster, and Banjo was like a maybe for DLC. So characters like Gino and Banjo both got boosted, in my opinion. I was hopeful for Gino, I was hopeful for Banjo, um, but nothing certain yet, you know. Honestly, if I were to make up something, if it was a character that I was trying to push in the game to make people think, oh, that character's in for sure just because I like the character, I, I would have chosen Gino, you know. I would have said, oh yeah, I got some source telling me Gino's in for sure. And Gino seemed way more likely to me than Banjo anyway. And again, if I was going to like just lie and make up some fake source that was telling me some character, I probably wouldn't have gone with Banjo or Gino to make it look like the Grinch leak was real. Again, if I were going to just fake a source or something, like if I fake the Grinch League source thing, I would have faked for Gino. He's my number one. Um, but yeah, so I was pushing for Banjo. I hope, um, you know, maybe the Gino me costume can come back. So if I can play as Little Mac and Banjo and Gino ends up being a me costume character, and I can accept that. Gino can be on the level of like Isaac and Chibi Robo and stuff. That's that's fine. I understand. Over on Twitter, at Magic Muyo pointed out to me that every DLC character is getting a color. Blue not taken. DLC characters represented a partner or buddy. Gino fits this perfectly. Now, obviously, I personally have a lot of Gino bias. I really want Gino to get into Smash. However, Gino is a spirit in the game, and I am sort of leaning towards spirits, probably deconfirmed characters. So I'm not expecting Gino. Right now, I'm really just hopeful that we'll get the Gino me costume put back in the game when Hero shows up. Uh, as that is a square character and I'm still kind of leaning towards me costume theory. However, I will admit that Gino, of course, does fit the color blue, and as far as companion theory goes, Gino could show up with Mallow on the banner art. Uh, it does fit very, very well for Gino if you combine those two theories. And so the next one to get released will be Hero, which will be a square character. If we continue to get square um, me costumes, if we get old square me costumes from Smash Wii U and 3DS, such as Gino and the Chocobo costume, then yeah, me costume theory continues to survive.